people engage is down for dueling decades The Matrix and Blade versus Bloodsport and Renegade Strap on that cap, bust out the power glove Come fight for what you love Dueling decades Hoop culture popping pins, dropping hand grenades Van Halen locked in Mortal Kombat with David Gray Found out ballet in sick, I am made of GNR Come fight for what you love Dueling decades Alright Whole Foods, you guys have control of the board yet once again Where are you going? What do you think, Mike? Should we uh, should we go to movies or hot products? Well, it's, I think we usually save movies for last, right? It's hot products? All right. Let's do hot products. I'll start off here. Oh. Uh, the hot product I have from January 1991, no specific numerical date, but uh, G.I. Joe, a real American hero video game for Nintendo, was released in January 91. Players take control of a team of three G.I. Joes, each with their own specialty. The goal of the game being to navigate through six stages on a mission to finally bring down Cobra. Features missions that take part in the Amazon, Antarctica, New York City. And uh, the final mission ends up at Cobra headquarters. Characters include Duke, Snake Eyes, Captain Gridiron, Rock and Roll, Blizzard, and General Hawk. G.I. Joe, a real American hero video game for Nintendo. At first I thought you were going to say the action figure. And I was like, wait a minute. You... <laughs> yeah, at first nuggets. I thought he said I'm not bad. And then I'm like, oh, no, then cartoon. And I'm like, no, not cartoon. Oh, the uh, NES. Yeah, <laughs> it was like it was the third one. I was like, ah, okay. <laughs> what is what does Mike have? Oh, well, let me let me tell you there, Rick. In January of 1991, General Mills introduced a brand new snack for the Betty Crocker line called Fruit by the Foot a staple of any 90 kid, 90s kid's lunchbox and a direct descendant to the fruit roll-up. It promised up to three feet of fun and an almost certain future of diabetic obesity. Fuck Dunkaroos, Gushers, and Bubble Tape. <laughs> foot after foot of colorful fun. What is a fuck Dunkaroo? I've heard of that before. Is that some sort of new move? Yeah, it's down under. It's big in bodegas. <laughs> Kind of like the dab, but you do it with your genitals. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, man. That's huge. It yep. is huge, man. Three Fruit feet. Three feet. Three feet. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw this, but Matt Stoney, the competitive eater, recently did a challenge on YouTube where he took fruit by the foot and he took like 300 of them and he rolled it all up into one big roll the size of a tire and he fucking ate it. It was incredible. And it died. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Went to a diabetic coma minutes later. Meanwhile, his dentist was stood next to him going, yes, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> One more foot. Yeah. He has, a, he has a dentist on retainer. Yeah, right? Dentist's God, like, I make guy's... so much money. I don't need any other clients. Can you imagine what his bowels look like? <laughs> <laughs> weirdly, no. I, weirdly, I've actually seen photographs. <laughs> ah <laughs> oh, the internet all right all right so for mine my hot product january 1982 finally get to talk about something i actually love i love this book it's amazing it's a great comic it is called kitty's fairy tale written by chris claremont and dave cockrum also known as uncanny x-men number 153 it's a groundbreaking episode issue because it's unlike any other issue um kitty's fairy tale is it unlike the dark phoenix saga or days of future past it's generally considered an all-time classic by most x-men fans and cited as one of the all-time fan favorite issues as the x-men team recover from their battle with the hellfire club and repair the mansion colossus and kitty put iliana Colossus's little sister to bed to help her go to sleep. Kitty tells her a story where the characters are modeled after the X-Men. Pirate Kitty and Colossus meet a wizard named Xavier and a cursed prince named Cyclops who are on a quest to save Cyclops' kingdom from a Xavier's apprentice, Princess Jean, who has been consumed by darkness and transformed into the Dark Phoenix. Uh, this issue is was a fan favorite of all X-Men fans, including myself. And years later, because it was so popular, they actually included the alternate reality in which the story, take, the story takes place into canon, calling it Earth 5311. The issue also has a few cool pop culture references in it. Uh, the Peony Fairies, uh, 
that Kitty talks about in the issue uh, are named after Elf Elf Quest creators uh, Wendy and Richard Peeney. And then, of course, Kitty Pride wears an Elf Quest shirt throughout the episode. Ileana has a Fozzie Bear stuffed animal, and it just really continues the really interesting um, tradition of including pop culture references inside some of these comic books. And the biggie from this episode was the birth of Lockheed, Lockheed known as the uh, giant purple dragon that became famous and will be in the new X-Men movies that are coming out. In this particular story, she has a purple dragon that is re a recast version of the X-Men's Blackbird jet. She names that Lockheed. Uh, later on, she will name an actual purple dragon that she meets Lockheed and becomes a X-Men staple fan favorite character for many years to come. So X-Men issue number 153, January 1982. Uh, I'm going to keep mine short so uh, John can wake back up. He's <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the, the, you know, like Mark. Well, I, was, I was listening intently about the large purple-headed uh, whatever it was. I knew exactly what he was. Lockheed. Lockheed. Yeah. Lockheed, man. Yeah, but uh, like Mark said, this uh, particular item I hold near and dear to my heart, as it was technically it was the first computer system that I owned, or my at least my family owned. Uh, although we didn't have it until five years later when they upgraded the machine to the 128. Alas, let's get back to uh, the 1982 Computer Electronics Show. Uh, basically, a, a mere two months after Commodore's president Jack Trammell decided against Using their newly designed chipsets in the failing arcade market, Jack asked his developers to put together a computer system that people could use at home and have it ready in time for CES in January, which was only six weeks away. The de developers successfully put together the C64, the Commodore C64 in less than two months and dazzled the crowds at CES with its $595 price tag, which is only around 1300 bucks today. So that's an amazing price for a computer back then. Uh, but Commodore had the best graphics card, best sound quality of that time. It literally it beat the pants off of the Apple, IBM, all the stuff that was out at that point. Uh, the C64 didn't stop being produced until 1994. So just imagine using your current laptop for 12 years. And to this day, it has sold more units than any computer before or after selling roughly 30 million units in its lifetime. The Commodore C64. And I had one of those units. I don't I know did, how many. But mine hours. was the one. I've got a unit. <laughs> <laughs> but don't forget it also helped launch the career of Lionel Richie, which is very important. Yeah, it did. What? <laughs> what? Lionel Richie. Hey, the oh, Commodore. I get it. The Commodores, I get it. Come on now. It feels like all four things to individual people would be equally as important. Um, <clears throat> the one that obviously stands out as like massive beyond the other three uh, is the Commodore 64. That was obviously a pivotal moment in uh, home computers sure. um, and uh, one that still resonates today. Um, uh, but beyond that, the other three are very, very valid pop culture, uh, products. Um, you know, uh, who doesn't love GI Joe video games? You'd have to be a fool not to. And while you're playing those video games, be sure to be shoving some fruity foot long snack into your gob. Three um, feet. <clears throat> three feet. <laughs> <laughs> That's that reminds me of that. Uh, I don't know if you ever like the kids in the hall sketch where the uh chicken lady and the bearded lady are at a strip show, and the guys say the, the, the chicken lady goes, He fought a cow, and the, <laughs> the bearded lady goes, Two cows, two cows. <laughs> Sorry, I just, <laughs> anyway, it's going to 1982 because of the Commodore 64, but Ooh. please, 1991 and Whole Foods do not feel any less important your two products were splendid and you should both be very proud of yourself <laughs> <laughs> for creating those products <laughs> hey, don't forget. Hey, come on i'll take all of you come on she knocked out a cow two cows yeah 